Welcome in everyone, Ty Bartell here with another Coach's Corner. This time we venture into the EOAC with the Columbiana Clippers here as we are joined by Coach Ryan Wolf. And Coach, what we do with all of our area coaches, we always start off with a sort of meet the team segment. And when you got guys like Zachary and, and Riley coming back that logged over 75 innings in that great pitching staff last year, I'm sure there's excitement, but what are some other returners that we're excited for, as well as some new guys that you're excited to uh, turn some heads over there in Clipper country. Yeah, you mentioned Zach and Riley, but uh, you know our pitching staff in general, we have a, a number of guys, including Seth Spooner, who uh, was limited a little bit last year in innings. We monitored it uh, just because he was coming off some arm issues uh, from the year before, but you know he's, he's full go, ready to go. A um, couple other pitchers that are young and upcoming would be Alex Isubio and uh, – Devin Doherty, uh, we're real excited about them. They're sophomores. Um, but just across the diamond, we have a lot of returners. Our first baseman, Brady Kreidler, is back. Um, you know, in the outfield, Brandon Pipoli and center fielder, he's back. Carson Dota, Trevor Deering played in the corners last year a lot and, and batted. You know, they're back. Um, Eddie Clancy played a lot of firsts, and, you know, he's looking to make a move to second base this year and provide more time. And, you know, he's back. Uh, our catcher is a sophomore. Um, due to injury last year, he – he probably played over half the games as our, our starting catcher as a freshman, and you know he's back. So experience-wise across the diamond, um, we're really excited with what we have. Uh, newcomers, we have 10 seniors, so we actually added so, some new guys. Um, Nick Million, um, Ashton Kakabras, Carter Murphy are known for basketball, but they, they decided to come out, and we're excited to, to have more athletes um, out on the squad. And then as juniors, Max Groms, um, Blake Nusser are, are guys we're hoping to, to see can, contribute another sophomore Ian Less uh he, he was a starter on the basketball team um gained valuable experience there as a real fast athletic kid that we we think could really help us coach let's just talk about this success you guys experienced inside that EOAC last year I believe 11 and 0 if I'm not uh, mistaken you guys were undefeated you ran the gauntlet too uh what's it going to take for you guys to kind of have that repeat performance and in that EOAC to win that conference again, and uh, just kind of comment on the uh, undefeated conference uh, slate last year. So, I mean, ultimately it comes down to our pitching staff. Um, you know, like we said, we're going to really roll with five deep um, and then with, with a few other guys, relievers, and, you know, they can continue to be consistent. Um, you know, pitching and good defense is what wins you games. Uh, the hitting will come, but especially in April, the it's cold, it's wet. Uh, you got to be able to pitch and throw strikes. So I think in order to continue to go, and that's what, what we got last year um, was really good pitching in, in the league games. You know, a couple games against United where our bats went cold and we won both games 3-2. And it, it took some different guys to, to contribute um, throughout the season. So, you know, offensively isn't really, you know, we want to score runs. Um, we want to be aggressive on the base pads. But if we can hold our opponents to three runs or less, uh, we feel we can win every single game. Going into that and going hand in hand with that is the non-conference schedule. Obviously, you're in a kind of bigger conference, so it does allow itself to schedule a lot of games. But you do have some room for non-conference ones as well. What are some ones you're excited to get this team experience with against, too? Because I think we know the name of the game is just see as many good pitchers as you can before the tournament. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it just started. We faced West Branch last week. We played Marlington tonight in a, in a scrimmage. You know, Marlington's got three really good pitchers, probably five. They're they're a really, really good team. So, you know, the first kid we saw today was pumping in at 90, and it's good stuff for us to see. Uh, Non-conference, you know, we open up with Rootstown. Uh, they're one of the best D3 schools in the area, and it's a team that we, we really want to play. Uh, I'm glad that we got them on our schedule um, to challenge. And we play Garrettsville Garfield's another really strong D3 team. Um, Howland, we play Howland and Hubbard. You know, we try to schedule up as much as we can. Uh, East Liverpool a couple times. And what ends up happening, uh, as anybody that's a baseball coach at this time knows, that rainouts will happen. And, you know, I'm real big. The Northeast Ohio Baseball Coach Association is awesome. And we send mass emails like crazy. And I will pick up games against any team at any time. So what our schedule says now is probably not what it's going to end with. Uh, but we'll end up probably picking up some more D2 and D1 schools as we go. Just last year we ended up playing Boardman twice. Um, you know, it's something that our kids are up for the challenge. I, I love to see our kids challenged and I want to, you know, help them grow and, you know, not really worry about size of the schools. doesn't matter when you're on the baseball diamond, you know, it's the same game for everybody. And we go out and roll and, and then play baseball. 
obviously with the success that you were able to bring on this team last year, it obviously goes hand in hand with the culture. I mean, the kids are bought into, and that helps out a lot. If you were to put into words what the culture of Columbiana is and what it means to be a clipper at the end of the day, uh, what would you say that that would be? So the real big thing, you know, we're pushing towards is, it's just team. We play for the name on the front of the Jersey. Um, you know, we want to have banners in the gym and, as we move forward, it doesn't matter who I am at what level. I know I can contribute. You know, I want to be excited when I get to the park if I see my name in the lineup. If it's not in the lineup, I know that I may contribute at some time. And we have been lucky that we've had good numbers when I first started. But last year we had 30 kids. This year we have 29. Um, we played 53 games in our program last year just through the – your regular season. If you add some the summer league that we do and scrimmages, we played 70 games through our through nine through 12 last year. Um, this year, it's the same thing. You know, we have a lot of kids. We're looking to add some extra games. You know, when you play Clipper baseball, you're going to play baseball. And that's what I think has been the key to our success um, in the league. And, you know, for a smaller school in the area is that our kids play. Um, we have JV teams. We're always playing JV games. We're always looking and they know when they come in, there's an expectation for them. You know, they're, they're going to play a, a, in some way to work, to get better. Cause you know, we have five coach, six coaches that we're going to coach them hard and they know that uh, rolling in. And I think that's why our numbers have been so good. That's what they want. They want accountability. They want expectations. And, you know, you come in our program, you're going to get it. Staying on that trend, too, of just the JV and then the youth level programs, too, just give it, giving you a chance now to shout out some of those other assistants and some other big names in this Columbiana program that, I mean, we know from the, the top down, I mean, it takes those youth programs to feed into the varsity schools, and that's what separates being a good team one year to a good program that consistently puts out good teams. Yeah, we're lucky. Our Columbiana Youth Baseball does a really good job. Um, you know, they've the nice thing is they have a bunch of fields on Mets roads or grass infield. They really do a good job taking care of them. Our rec league is very good. I'm a big believer in rec leagues. You know, we know what travel ball is. Travel ball is great, but more kids need to be playing baseball. And that's what we offer. And they play, you know, in the local communities. And, you know, we have freshmen now that have been able to continue to play because they played locally. And, you know, it might not have been a, a situation, whether it's financially or just they weren't ready for a travel ball aspect, that they get to play baseball. And, you know, they come up here and we have good freshman numbers. We have eight this year um, and we had nine last year. And considering, you know, the size of our school and the schools in the league and a lot of the area, you know, that's, that's exceptional. So it all starts with that, that feeder league. But the kids get to play baseball. So that's number one. Um, you know, and then with our JV squad and Austin Severco has been my JV coach. I think this is his fifth year. Um, the kids love him. He does a great job. Uh, they were at Marlington today and, you know, he, he's fair with the kids. He's strict with the kids. They know the expectations and, um, you know, they really, really enjoy playing for him. So, you know, moving up, uh, my assistants, Bryce Franken and, and Hank Schluter or, you know, Hank was a, a college pitcher at Worcester. So our pitchers, you know, they get coached by a you know, college pitcher um, that played at Columbiana and they, they love Columbiana. And then <clears throat> Bryce is our outfield coach and he, you know, those kids, every pitch, there's somewhere to go um, and they know it and they're always looking in and, you know, he does a, a heck of a job and even with the, he coaches their base with the bases. And then I have a young guy, Evan Keneally, um, played for me and he's the most passionate kid I know about baseball. So our kids, once they get to our level, they're not just pushed aside because there are five, six, I've, you know, I had coaches that are left. They're volunteering now a shorter time that are with them and they're going to coach them. They're going to coach them hard. And no matter their skill level, they're going to be coached to, to become better baseball players and better people. Where does your love for the sport originate and what kind of fuels you to keep coming back year in and year out to kind of coach and lead the, uh, the next level of baseball talent? So I, I've always grown up loving baseball. Um, you know, my dad was a big baseball guy. Uh, you know, what's interesting, though, is like football became my game. Um, when I was in college, I was playing both football and baseball. And, you know, my freshman year, John Carroll. And then after my freshman year, um, I went into my sophomore year going to do both. And then eventually just kind of gave way to football and, and continued my football career there. 
Um, but baseball has always been something. It's just something about spring, something about being on the diamond. I love going to pirate games and you know rubber duck games and just anywhere that there's baseball being played. Um, you know, that's what that strives me. Just, you know, yesterday I was out working on the field and the sun's out and I took a picture of it. And it just it's something that I love being on, just standing there and watching kids play. And the best thing about baseball is it's so unpredictable and every day is a little bit different. You know, you could be the best team, but if, what what type of team pitcher are you running into or what type of day did your guy have? Or, you know, maybe they just lucked into a base hit that you didn't expect. And how are you going to react? And you're dealing with adversity all the time. And that's what life's about is dealing with adversity and, and you know, ready for that next pitch and clearing your, clearing your head and, and getting ready to go. And I think it teaches great lessons. And I love being a part of that. Speaking of lessons, I think that kind of leads right into the next question. What are some things outside of the sport of baseball that you try to teach these kids uh, to take with them in their life too? Or some, maybe some lessons that are in the sport of baseball that you kind of hope go hand in hand with a life lesson and they're able to take it with them outside of the sport. Yeah. So one of the things that we talk a lot about is the mental game you know, being mentally strong because baseball is a mentally taxing sport um, because things don't always go that your way. And, it, you know, hitting a baseball is one of the hardest things to do in the world. So as you grow up and you go forward, when you hit adversity or something doesn't go your way, how do you clear your mind? How do you, how do you not act on emotion and how do you act using, you know, what you've been taught um, and, you know, the, the things that you, you believe in, uh, you know, that's a real big, big thing. And, you know, one of our rules this year actually is about being accountable for the jobs that you have, for the people you are around. You know, I really try to I think a lot of times we pass off in this world now to other people that they're just going to do it, whether it's picking up a, a piece of trash on the ground or, you know, helping somebody up off the ground or, you know, in, in the sporting aspect or, you know, there's just so many different things that we just pass up. And I want our kids to, to learn that, no, you know, you do it. It's don't pass it up. It's not about a hierarchy or a person that should do it. it. It's anybody, you know, we would have a better world that way. So that's one of the things we've been really, really talking about this year. And the kids wanted to make it a rule about that. And, you know, I think that's a, it's an awesome thing and they're learning, they're getting better. Uh, you know, we're, we're not always great at, at cleaning stuff up or, you know, seeing something and not walking past it, but that's just something that takes time and practice and emphasis. I love the culture. I love the lessons being taught. And that just really gets at the real essence of the team. But now let's look on the diamond real quick. And one of our final questions, and you talk about 10 seniors on the team, you're bringing back some great pitchers. It's a staff that had an ERA under two last year, some 300 hitters returning as well. What are some of the expectations that you have and some goals that you have for this uh, team going into this season? Uh, we have pretty lofty expectations this year. We always do. We always talk about winning the league, but we want to go beyond that. I don't think we we haven't had the success in May that we we want. You know, last year we were a seeded team. We were hosting Mooney in a sectional final, and you know things didn't quite go our way. And we a couple of years ago, same thing. We were a two seed, and you know we lose an in extra innings at our place. And we want to build to be, be the best that we can be in May. I think we've started off hot a lot. Um, these past few years and then kind of cooled off in May. So that's really been our emphasis is we win in May. We want to win in May. So the, our ultimate goal is just to continue to get better. So when we're in the May, we're at our peak. And that means monitoring like our pitch counts early, um, you know, our usage of arms, you know, whether somebody like you mentioned, Riley or or Seth, you know, do we want to play him in the outfield or like somebody like Zach, does he, do we need to play him in the infield this game because he's going to pitch the next game or he's just coming off pitching. We have enough depth that we can substitute guys and we can DH or we can just give guys days off so that we are at our strongest in May and we're not burnt out or we're not sore. We're not tired, those sort of things. So that's our ultimate goal. We we want to do great things in May. You know, what that means is, you know, baseball is a fickle game, especially in a one game tournament. So we don't know, but if we feel that we're playing our best baseball, we will be proud of what we do and what we accomplish. Hopefully the success in April leads it right into May for you, Coach. My final thing for you is uh, more of a shout-out for you to, to the Columbiana community. Shout-out when your first game is and when the uh, Clipper faithful can uh, catch a game from you guys. So our first – Game is on the road. It's uh, March 30th. It's at Rootstown. But our first home game, our home opener is against Howland 
Um, and we actually owe those guys. They, they got us pretty good last year, which is the next day, the 31st on Thursday. So hopefully the weather holds true. Um, our field's really dried out. Everything looks pretty good now. So you never know in March, but um, you know, on the 31st, we'd love to see a, a big crowd out there rooting on our Clippers. You heard it here first from Coach Wolf Clipper Faithful, March 31st. It's a Thursday, I believe, 5 o'clock start time. That should be between the uh, the Clippers and, uh, excuse me, what was the opponent again? Uh, Holland Tigers. Clippers and the Tigers. And, yeah, that's going to be a good one, no doubt. We'll be excited to talk with the Tigers coach as well. But for now, Columbiana, this is going to be an exciting season for you guys. Ten Caesars, Caesars, seniors coming back, and you can catch the Clippers March 31st against Talon. Coach Wolf, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.